Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Rats and mice are a staple diet for boas and other snakes, and many boa keepers feed nothing else. However, there's lots of other things you can feed your boa to put variety in his or her life. And today I'm gonna to discuss some of these alternate foodstuffs for pet boas. I'm also gonna show you some of my beautiful boas, so be sure to stay tuned. This video topic was recently suggested by a viewer, and I want to thank you guys for suggesting these video topics. If you ever have a topic in mind you want to learn more about, feel free to shoot me an email or message, and if it's a good topic for a future video and that I can discuss, I'll do my best to include it. So there's a number of reasons why you might want to consider more than just rats and mice for your snake. And so the first is nutrition. By giving alternate foodstuffs, you can vary the uh, what your boa is eating and you can make up for any possible nutritional deficiencies. It also provides a form of enrichment because would you want to eat the same food every day for the rest of your life? Probably not even if it's your favorite food. So providing alternate uh, foodstuffs gives your boa a little bit of enrichment and some stimulation and probably makes his or her life a little bit better. And we always want to do the best for our pets. And then another reason is convenience. By not feeding exclusively rats and mice, you can feed other items that might be a little bit more convenient for you, that might be more economical or more available, and it just makes life better both for you and your boa. So if you're only feeding rats and mice at this point, I would definitely suggest that you consider feeding some of these alternate prey items that I'm gonna discuss. And so for the first prey item are birds. And Birds are really a good thing to supplement your snake's diet with or your boa's diet in addition to the rats and mice. There are two main species of bird that you can feed to your boa and those are the chicken and the quail. But actually any conveniently available bird of appropriate size would probably be okay to feed to your boa. And so I feed quail pretty regularly to my boas. I would say they get about one quarter to one third of their diet is quail that I supplement along with the rats and mice. And so some people who've never fed quail before might be confused about the sizes. And if you're used to ordering a large rat for your boa, um, sometimes a large quail doesn't correspond to the same size as a large rat, depending on the supplier. So look on the supplier's website who supplies your uh, prey items and usually they'll list the weight of the items in grams or sometimes it'll be in pounds or ounces you'll have to do some conversion but for example a large rat uh, I'm gonna check my notes right here but a large rat at one supplier is 175 to 275 grams so you might say well I'll order a large quail but it turns out the large quail is actually quite a bit smaller than that but they have double extra large quails, which are 155 to 200 grams, and they have triple extra large quails, which are 200 to 250 grams. So if you're used to feeding the large rat to your boy, you would want to order the double extra large or even the triple extra large quail. And so I would say that um, if you're feeding quail, you might want to give slightly smaller as far as the same weight because quail have a lot of uh, sharp parts. They've got legs with claws and they've got a sharp beak and you might be a little bit concerned about that. So you definitely don't want to feed a quail that's really big. You want it to leave a barely visible bulge. It might not even leave a bulge at all. So, you know, my thinking is that if you feed a quail or any kind of bird that's too big and it's got these pointy claws and beak, there's a chance it might injure your snake from the inside out. So you definitely want to avoid that. I've never had any problems like that. And when I first started feeding quail, I would actually trim the beaks so they didn't pose this problem. I don't do that anymore and it's fine. But again, you want to feed a quail that's a little bit smaller weight wise than the corresponding rat that you've been feeding. As far as the acceptability to the boas, I've never had any problem getting my boas to eat the quails. In fact, they seem to really love them. They will strike them with gusto and they just seem to really like the taste of the quail. You know, even more so than they like the rats. So typically not an issue. Um, one thing I will say though, that sometimes boas are a little confused about how to eat the quail. When you have a rat or mouse, you know, it's pretty easy for the boa to find the head and it's kind of a convenient shape 
for the boa to just swallow. But the quails and you know other birds have all kinds of wings and legs and things sticking out. And the boa has to start at the head, which has this little flimsy neck. Sometimes the heads actually fall off, by the way. But the boa needs to find the head and then work his way down. So this is another reason why you don't want to feed a bird that's too big because it's you know hard for the animal to for the boa to swallow. I mean usually after they've eaten a few quail they kind of get the hang of it but I've seen some have issues or not issues some have difficulty figuring it out and they might even start at the back end of the quail and try to eat the legs I know the reverse way which of course never works. So quail will work fine and um, boas um, even as small as you know three or four feet can eat the smaller quails. There's also chickens and I don't feed large chickens to my boas on a regular basis or really at all. Sometimes I feed like a small adult chicken to my larger boas. I, my big Indian python gets full grown chickens but my, you know, my Indian python is quite a bit bigger than my boas. Um, I do feed chicks though. You can get chicks relatively inexpensively and I a uh, small chick, you know, a pretty standard sized chick. It's good for a boa that's maybe around three feet long. I wouldn't feed uh, any boa smaller than this a, a chick, but as long as they're eating maybe like large mice or small rats, they can usually handle a chick. And you know, the same thing, you don't want to feed too big because they've got all these spiky appendages, but most boas really like them. And so I'll typically start feeding my boas chicks when they're, you know, a couple years old. As far as where you can find chickens and quail and you know in addition to the usual rodent suppliers you might want to look for local farms that either breed uh, chickens for eggs and they have often retired layers or they may have excess chicks things like that you might be able to find a local quail farmer as well uh, to get your quail from in addition if you have if you live in a rural area and you're into like hobby farming be great to set up a flock of quail you know or even chickens um, a lot of us have chickens for eggs myself included you know so I don't really have any baby chicks because they don't breed but I have thought about setting up a flock of quail just so I can breed my own not a uh, popular idea with my wife though so it hasn't happened so far but maybe someday I'll have my own flock of quail to provide fresh quail for my boas so I thought I'd grab another boa to show you guys, and this is one of my Suriname holdbacks from 2016. Actually, a lot of my boas are breeding right now, and I don't want to take them out when they're breeding. So there's actually fewer snakes to film. So you'll probably see a lot of the same boas in my videos for the next couple months when a lot of them are occupied with their breeding. But hopefully they'll be worth it and when we have lots of nice baby boas this summer and fall. So there are in addition to birds there's some alternate mammal foodstuffs that you can consider for your boa you know one of the most obvious are rabbits and rabbits are a really good nutritional source they're lower in fat than many other foodstuffs for boas or prey items i should say i just love the word foodstuffs um, so you can feed them and you they, they help the boa retain the muscle mass and not get chunky or you know overweight and a lot of people that have large boas like eight feet nine feet they feed them exclusively rabbits they might feed a large rabbit once every like six or even eight weeks so they don't feed them very often the bo the rabbit uh, leaves a pretty big bulge it's probably larger in proportion to the boa's body size than I would feed but they report that they have to feed them less often um, one thing about rabbits though they're kind of expensive given you know the size compared to rats and mice uh, they're also less available but if you have a good source of rabbits or you know even if you're breeding your own rabbits you can consider feeding rabbits of appropriate size to your boas and then there's a couple other alternate rodents in addition to rats and mice um, you can sometimes get hamsters uh, either the Syrian hamsters or the Chinese dwarf hamsters and uh, gerbils as well and people have told me that with the hamsters they often um, will feed them to problem feeders because if a boa won't take rats or mice sometimes it'll take hamsters and people have even told me that uh, picky feeders like hog island boas if you start them out on hamsters they're a lot easier to get to feed so if you've even thought about setting up my own colony of dwarf hamsters 
you know, like the Chinese hamsters or the, you know, um, Siberian dwarf hamsters. But, you know, one can only do so many projects given their bandwidth and resources. So there's a few other ideas for alternate food items for your boa constrictor. I haven't tried these three remaining ideas, but I imagine that some of you guys have. So if you have any experience with these, you know, let me know your experience so that the viewers can benefit and decide whether they should try it for themselves. And so the first idea is to use supermarket chicken. You just buy chicken at the supermarket and you feed it to your boa. This doesn't have to be cooked. You can feed it raw chicken and you can either feed a whole chicken if your boa is big enough. You know, you might want to get one of those little tiny like Cornish game hens for a smaller boa. Or you can feed chicken parts like drumsticks or breasts, things like that. And people have reported doing this for boas and for other snakes. And I've never tried it, but apparently many boas and other snakes will just take the chicken part, you just give them the raw drumstick and the boa just swallows it whole bone and all and it's all dissolved. And so I would say that if you want to try this, I would not do this exclusively because chicken parts are not a complete balanced diet. It's just um, a, you know, muscle and skin and the bone. It doesn't have the organs which have a lot of the nutrients. So I wouldn't recommend doing this more than a few times a year. You really want to feed a whole animal as well, a whole rat or mouse or bird, uh, in addition to the chicken parts. However, it might be okay just to feed it every once in a while, and it might offer some enrichment for your boa, something different, and it's a conveniently available food source that you can pick up right at the supermarket. Another uh, precaution with doing uh, supermarket chicken is the risk of salmonella and this is for both the boa and for the uh, pet owner. You obviously want to wash your hands carefully after holding supermarket chicken because of the possibility of salmonella and other germs which can cause illness. And then for your boa it's probably not going to be an issue since boas will naturally eat you know prey items that have a lot of bacteria but I've read reports about people that fed exclusively chicken or you know, mostly chicken and the animals ended up dying eventually from salmonella poisoning. And this, what's weird about it, it was like a chronic thing. You know, with a human salmonellosis, it's a very acute, you eat the bad chicken, you get sick uh, pretty quickly after. But apparently they were claiming that the boas can take in the salmonella and it doesn't initially cause any issues until they reach a certain threshold after months or years of doing this, and then it can be deadly. The next possible prey item for your boa is obviously not recommended for everyone, and this is something I haven't tried myself, but I've often thought about it lately, and that is to capture squirrels. And squirrels are all over the place. Um, here in California, there's a native gray squirrel, but then there's also this invasive uh, eastern fox squirrel. And I see these things everywhere. And I'm not exactly sure why somebody took squirrels from the east coast and, you know, transplanted them to California. I don't know if it was for hunting. There's really not much meat on them. But we have all these squirrels, and they do, they're very destructive. Um, I have issues with my dogs. My dogs go wild whenever they see these squirrels and they just want to destroy them and you know I even have a dog who charged into a brick wall to try to jump up and get one and ended up injuring himself so I'm not a huge fan of these squirrels but squirrels are like the perfect size and shape uh, for a boa constrictor to eat you know like a six to seven foot boa a squirrel would be a really nice tasty morsel and I'm sure that the boas would love to eat these squirrels and so I haven't tried to catch squirrels myself. You know, I've thought about catching them as a nuisance animal. Um, but the laws are not entirely clear. So if you are going to try to hunt or catch squirrels, make sure you're not in any violation of any local laws. Okay, don't, don't say that, well, I heard it on the Brian Boas channel and decided to do it. I don't know, it might be completely illegal where you live. I know that in California, you can't uh, catch the native gray squirrels. Apparently the eastern fox squirrels you can catch anytime because they're invasive. Apparently you can also catch ground squirrels because uh, those are not considered a game animal. But the native gray squirrels are considered a game animal. So if you want to hunt them, you need a hunting license and you need to hunt them in season. 
Okay, but again, make sure you consult your local laws to make sure you're not uh, violating any laws. And so with the squirrels, I would imagine it'd be better to trap them because if you hunt them, you know, the bullet can do some damage and then you got a bullet in the, the squirrel carcass. You obviously don't want your snake eating. But, you know, if you trap them, you're going to have to euthanize them, which is, you know, a whole another challenge. You might want to use CO2 or something like that. Um, again, obviously not for everyone. The other thing about squirrels is they can be quite aggressive and they've got really sharp teeth. So if you're not careful, them son bitches can really do a number on your hand. And I've even heard stories about local people who the squirrels have attacked in the last few years. Apparently they get really aggressive. They lose their fear of humans and they will stand and guard their territory and charge people. So there was a, a old man a few years ago in my hometown, in my town here, who was actually attacked in his garage by a uh, squirrel and you know they do some of them carry rabies as well um, so again this is definitely not something for everyone and so lastly if you do decide to try something like this I would recommend that you freeze any of the uh, prey items any of the squirrels before you feed them to your boa um, it's probably pretty unlikely that your boa is going to get a parasite from a wild squirrel but just in case you definitely want to freeze it you know, kill the parasite so you don't have to worry about that. But if you've ever tried anything like this, I'd love to hear from you. Um, let me know how it went. There's one other alternate boa food item you may want to consider, and this is really the opposite extreme from hunting your own live squirrels, and that is the reptile sausage. So if you haven't heard of a reptile sausage, it's basically like a sausage, like a you know hot dog, that's made specifically for reptiles to eat. You know, and typically people will grind up meat from different animals, you know, including things like chicken, lamb, I've heard kangaroo even, as well as the more traditional rodents and chicken and quail, things like that. They might add eggs and they might add vitamin and nutritional supplements. And then this paste is stuffed into a uh, sausage casing, uh, you know, to a certain size and then they're fed to reptiles. And apparently lots of reptiles will eat these. You know, a lot of snakes are basically garbage disposals. Um, boas will eat pretty much a lot of things. Uh, I've heard that indigo snakes are really even less picky than boas. And then a lot of lizards, big uh, uh, lizard, carnivorous lizards like tegus and monitors, they will eat anything you give them. So these animals have no issue eating these reptile sausages. Boas might be a little more picky and you may need to um, scent the reptile sausage with your boa's favorite food, rat or quail or whatever, just to get them going. But apparently it's not that easy to convert uh, boas to eating these reptile sausages. And so the reptile sausages are available commercially. And I've seen that they're kind of expensive, you know, for, for like a 50 gram reptile sausage, you'll end up paying quite a bit more than uh, what you'd pay for a 50 gram rat. However, they claim you have to feed less of them. So as far as the amount of calories and nutrition, it ends up costing the same as feeding uh, you know, rodents. Um, one other thing to consider is that you can make your own reptile sausages and there were actually recipes available online that people have used. Uh, you could probably use this as a starting place and if you're into cooking and sausage making, you might wanna come up with your own specific recipe, take it into account the needs of your own animals. One advantage of feeding these reptile sausages are for people that don't want to feed a animal, a prey item, and it's a little uh, more sanitized as far as, you know, the meat eating. You know, we think about it, how many of us would go and be eating meat as much as we do if we have to raise and slaughter our own food animals? I mean, a lot of people would become vegetarians pretty quick. But when you go to the supermarket and you see the conveniently packaged hot dogs and sausages and other meat items, cold cuts, most people don't even think about, you know, they're eating an animal. It's just so convenient, you know, probably a little too convenient. Um, by that, you know, that right there is one of the pros of these reptile sausages for people that don't want to face the reality that these animals are carnivores. Um, what I would say, though, is that if you do feed these reptile sausages, you probably don't want to feed them exclusively. 
although the commercial ones claim to be nutritionally balanced, I would be really leery about that. So what I would recommend is just feeding them occasionally, maybe a quarter to a third of the diet, just as an occasional treat for your reptiles, just to you know supplement their regular prey items. And it's probably also more convenient for you. Um, but you might want to consider these reptile sausages. And again, I've never tried them, so I'd love to hear any experiences, positive or negative, that you may have with them. So that was a rundown of some alternate foodstuffs for your boa constrictor, in addition to the usual rats and mice. So if you're feeding nothing but rats and mice to your boa, I hope you'll give some thought to trying some of these alternatives to spice up your boa's diet a little bit and, you know, maybe be more convenient for you as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.